A wide-angle lens is one of the most difficult lens to use in landscape photography and many landscape photographers are using it wrong. And the wider it gets, the more difficult it gets to create a compelling and interesting photo. 10 years ago, I got my first wide-angle lens, a 17 to 40 millimeter f4L lens from Canon that I still own and use even today. And I was so amazed by how cool the photos look, how dynamic the perspective was, and how much of the entire world was fitting inside in just one of my photos. That was the actual problem. The whole world was fitting inside my photo. And that is the reason for which wide-angle lens are so difficult to use, because so much is getting inside your photo, it becomes difficult to create simple and compelling photo and composition. In this video, I'll present 10 tips, that's 10 tips for how to use wide angle lens. And I can guarantee if you stay and watch until this video ends, you'll have a better understanding on how to master a wide angle lens and how to assess and evaluate and frame your landscape while using a wide angle lens. Tip number one is look for an interesting foreground. When we talk about wide angle, for me, this is everything that goes below 20 millimeters and above 12 millimeters on a full frame sensor. And because it's so wide and so much gets inside your photo, every piece of information that you decide to introduce in your photo must look interesting. That is why you need an interesting foreground element. So here are some general rules of what you can use as a good foreground element. It, first of all, it has to uh, be simple. For example, a rock formation or just one rock in the middle of some water. It also has to offer a visual anchor from which the viewer should start the journey inside your photo. For example, some flowers, some um, marks in the, um, in the snow, some ice formation, um, everything that can present some visual interest that can make a good starting point in your photo. Another tip is the foreground should not dominate the subject in terms of brightness. Now, wide angle lenses already will emphasize and make the foreground element look bigger. You don't need to have a lot of light on that element and especially to have a lot more light than the subject which is going to be placed in the background. What things are not working as a foreground element? Well, Usually a simple field of grass, it can be green grass, it can be um, dry grass during autumn, it doesn't work. But if you're staying really low and the blades of grass are really thick and you can really see the blades of grass that you can also use to hide some elements, then this, this can uh, work as a, an interesting foreground. But just general grass don't, uh, doesn't. Um, a field covered in just snow, simple snow, no wind marks, it doesn't work, bushes, uh, trees with no leaves on their branches. It's usually uh, things that are cluttered, usually chaos. When you have a foreground element, this element should be simple, should point you in the right direction. The composition should start with that element and that element should not dominate the rest of the composition. It has to be visual enough, interesting to, uh, interesting visual to, pull you into the photo, but it doesn't have to be too interesting to dominate the attention or to steal the entire attention. Tip number two is get close to the foreground element. Now this foreground element can be really big or can be really small. Um, you can be standing or photographing low, but you need to get close to it. As I told you, the wide angle lens will include so much of the landscape in your lens. You'll have a lot of ground in the lower part of the photo. So that's why you're searching for a good foreground element. Now you find a good foreground element. It's no point of having that foreground element lost in all the vast uh, and other elements in the lower part of the photo. You need to stay close enough to this foreground element to make it look good. It, I, I think it you know exactly what I mean. And um, sometimes you can use foreground elements to mask different areas that you don't want. For example, you can sit really low in high grass to cover a road that was 
beyond the grass and you don't want it in your shot so you can do uh, things like that but getting close to the foreground element changes the um, the the perspective entirely and makes that foreground element a starting point uh, for the rest of the of the photo that is really important and I, I can't emphasize it enough the foreground element should help you start the composition that's why you don't need other distracting elements in the lower part of the image that's the that's the point in, if you ju just look at the lower part of the image the foreground is like taking a portrait of a person it's there it's in front of you and you 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 have to look at it and from there on you start your journey tip number three is frame it in diagonal here's what i mean once you find an interesting foreground element and you know that you have to stay really close to it this is a good moment to evaluate from where you should uh, photograph it and my general rule is whenever I find a foreground element, I place the foreground element to the lower part of the image in one side and the subject or the final point of the composition is in the upper part of the image in the opposite side. Now why am I doing this? Uh, I create a strong diagonal. This is a general diagonal in the shot, but this diagonal is broken in other small uh, leading line so I may start here and then a, a small leading line will take you here and then another one here and then the final one will get you to to the subject and this way you have a visual journey through the entire photo a thing that you don't want to do is place the foreground element let's say in the lower left side of the image and then have the subject in the upper left side of the image but um, and this means it's straight above the foreground element on the same side. Why this is not good? Because you have a vertical journey and the eye of the viewer will go to the foreground element and then straight to the subject. The entire right side of the photo will be not used. Even if you have beautiful composition, you will still look from down to the foreground, up to the subject. And this way you use only half of the photo. And that's why having a, a relationship in, uh, of vertical uh, between these two elements, in my personal opinion, doesn't work. Tip number four, use a small aperture. Now, because you're so close to the foreground element, you have to close the aperture. Now, sometimes you have to close it a little bit more than usual because usually I'm photographing at f8 or f11 depending on, uh, on the lens I'm using. But if I have to go to f16 or f22 to have a bigger depth of field and have all the elements in focus, then I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter for me that diffraction goes into action from f16. A lot of people are uh, preoccupied with this with this idea that okay diffraction starts at f16 f16 is a no-no because the clarity in the point of focus will decrease so much compared to f8 yes the, the clarity will decrease but you can you can still go uh, and sharpen your photos in post one and second your photo it's, it's still going to be sharp i mean we are obsessed with sharpness and i think this is because the 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 brand told us that you, you need to be sharper and sharper and sharper i think in my personal opinion that if you have to go to f16 or f22 if your lens if your lens go above goes above to f22 and you have to use it just use it and and simply don't think about photography it's not all about technical elements tip number five focus stack if you need to now there are numerous occasions when I notice people don't know exactly when to focus stack. So um, here is the simplest situation when you need to focus stack. When you have your foreground element so close to your lens, this means uh, if you're photographing with a 17 millimeter lens, then you will have a 17, millimeter, uh, 17 centimeter minimal distance focus. So when you have your foreground element let's say 20 centimeters from the front of your lens that is a good moment to use focus stacking 
And if you don't know exactly what this technique is and how to apply and how to use it, I have a whole in-depth tutorial on this. I'll put the link for this video in the description of this video. So if you want, just go and check it out. The idea is that the forward element is so close, you can, it, it doesn't matter what value of aperture you use, you'll never get the entire landscape in, uh, in sharpness. So your depth of field will start to a certain point and end very quickly, not to infinity, but very close to your lens. And that is why you need focus tacking. Tip number six, distortions are your friend. A wide angle lens will heavily distort the foreground element. And the wider it gets, the heaviest the distortion. You will have this element that looks really stretched depending on how you look at it. And this can be used to your advantage. And the advantage is that you can emphasize the elements that are really close to the camera. Take a look at this photo, for example. This is a really small waterfall and you can check out the leaves and you can have uh, an actual feeling of how big this waterfall is. So as you can see, compared to the leaves, it's really small, it's almost nothing. But because I'm, I'm sitting really low and I'm photographing with a 17 millimeter uh, focal length on a full frame body, the actual size that you are perceiving, that you are seeing in the photo, it's much bigger. So you can use this to your advantage. This stretching that goes beyond natural can be used to your advantage if you experiment and you learn over time how to use this. Tip number seven, simplify, it's much more important right now. Now in landscape photography, this concept of having a simple photo, it's very important. I think it's one of the crucial um, concepts in landscape photography. And a landscape photographer should spend more time thinking about what elements should not include than the elements that should include. So it's very important for you to be very conscious and to uh, know exactly what elements you don't need in the shot. And it will help you a lot if you think about composition in such terms. What are the elements that, are simp that I simply don't want in the shot because they simply don't support the subject. This is a very, a very, very simple uh, concept. And why it's, it's much more important with the wide angle lens. As I told you before, a lot of elements get inside your photo. So it's very easy to get your photo clutter and have all sorts of elements in your photo that you don't necessarily need there. And uh, having a simple composition will always help. And you need to move around sometimes in order to simplify things, to have other elements removed from your shot. You have to move a lot. And sometimes from a horizontal shot, you can simply go vertical in portrait mode and the dynamic of the shot changes a lot. So just experiment with this when you are on, on the field and you will see how much the photo changes. Tip number eight, pay close attention to the edges of the photo. Because you are so wide, uh, I, I realized too late in many situations that I got elements that I, I didn't want there. So uh, the minute I have all my photo uh, ready, before I press the shutter, I now have the habit of checking the edges of the photo. Sometimes I had a person standing to my right and, oh, and I, I simply didn't thought that it's gonna be visible, but it did. So sometimes when you point uh, the camera straight down, you have one of your tripod legs inside your photo. So I've been there. I did all these mistakes and that's why I'm having this habit right now. I'm checking uh, the, the edges of the photo. I'm making sure not having unwanted elements inside my photo. Tip number nine is evaluate the subject's size. Now, the way a wide angle lens uh, works is it increases the size of foreground elements and decreases the size of background elements. Now, the subject is gonna be placed in the background because you have a vertical uh, journey. So the subject's size is gonna be diminished. Even a really huge mountain shot in a certain way with a wide enough and uh, focal length, it's gonna be reduced to a, a small hill. So you can't have too much of a distance between you 
and the subject. What you see with your own eyes, it's not what the camera will see with a 17mm or a 16mm or with a 12mm lens. So it's very, uh, it's, it's very different. You have to be aware of this and you have to look through the the, you have to look to the photo to evaluate the size of the subject. Sometimes the subject size can become so small that it will be irrelevant. So at that point, if you still want to make the shot, maybe you can't sit low. Maybe you have to raise up and tilt the camera down a little bit just to, to make the, uh, a longer stretch of the, on the foreground element, but still have a lot of the uh, subject in, in shot. There's also a technique that you can do in post and that involves basically scaling scaling up the the background this way you, you kind of correct this perspective um, deformation that you get in the lens and this is a technique that many photographers use you have to be extra careful because when you are stretching the photo some things may appear that are not quite right so you need to use this technique uh, cautiously but it's a very effective technique if you want to to make the subject as imposed, as, as, as big as you saw it with your own eyes, and but still keep the dynamic of a wide angle shot. Tip number 10, a different look to travel photography portrait. Now I'm a landscape photographer and I'm also a travel photographer and I travel to remote places in Romania, for example, and I did some really wonderful portraits with a 17 mm lens. And I, I know that some of you will say that 17 mm for portraits is unheard of, but believe me, the results are, are extremely interesting. And you can, you can place yourself in, in such interesting places. Sometimes the houses of these people are really small, but sometimes they, they are using different instruments. They are working with different um, with different tools and getting so close to them it can it, I mean I'm having the feeling that you are right there in the middle of the action the, the the perspective is dynamic and it looks it looks really well you'll have to try to uh, experiment it for yourself but this is how I see it now if you have other tips on how to use a wide angle lens use the comment section below don't forget about my mentoring program that it's a one-on-one -on -one program. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. Thanks for your time and watching. And until next time, keep on photographing. Even though you're staying inside home, keep on photographing with your mind and heart. And bye-bye. Uh,